Okay, so in this week's video, we're gonna be discussing, we're gonna be discussing the problem or the advantage of shit talking. If this was a different time, I would invade his favela on horseback and kill anyone that was not fit to walk. But we are in a new time, so I'll whoop his ass in July. So yeah, we're gonna cover, we're gonna cover how does shit talking affect fighters, affect people, affect everybody in general, and what it does to the fight game and for to the fight itself. First of all, it uh, pretty much hypes up the fight, hypes up the people, you know, it, it's like exciting, you know, it, it, that's what pretty much what sells fights, you know, because in the fight game, you know, you have to sell like your, your character. They know how I am. They don't like me. They know I'm cocky. I can't help. So, you know, you're able to sell, you know, pay-per-views and events and sell out arenas. But I feel like for the fighters themselves, it, I, I think is it depends on every fighter independently. Because, for example, some fighters, they're more easily um, broken down by all this shit talking. For example, like, you know, like, let's say one of the biggest shit talkers right now, Conor McGregor. Tell him I'm his Whatever he wants, and I want you to be the champ. He, he said, tell him he's his daddy. Tell him I said, I am his daddy. <laughs> Conor McGregor, he easily, you know, broke down Jose Aldo, you know, Jose Aldo came so fucking out of his mind, you know. You see fear in my eyes, you see nothing in my eyes, you know, you know, you skinny little bitch, what do you mean? So when he came to a fight, you know, 13 seconds, man, like, that was just, like, even hard to believe. And, for example, let's take another fighter, somebody like Nate Diaz, that pretty much um, takes that shit-talking as something, like, to not just hype up the fights, but, like, he takes it in a way where, like, he's, he's responding back to it and it, like, fire hit, fire, yeah. like, it fires him up even more. If that's your two boys, the scrap pack, remember that? Mom, damn, they were, did you know they were taking that stuff? Did you know they were taking that stuff? Did you? You're on steroids. Like, it fires up the people, you know, that's why maybe that fight did so well, because both of these guys were like, you know, back and forth, like, oh, like, fuck you, or oh, fuck you too. Get comfortable, full 70, but I get comfortable. I don't give a fuck. I don't give a fuck I either. Fuck. I don't give a fuck either. What do you think, guys? Does shit talking affect fighters? Does it affect people? Not, because recently, since the whole Conor McGregor thing, everybody's trying to talk shit. And a lot of it, I look at it, and I feel like, man, shut up. This is not, this is not who you are. Conor is like, this is who he is. He's an arrogant asshole. But that's just who he is, and he does it. I don't think he's like that all the time, but that's like, like uh, his personality on steroids. Steroids? We ain't talking about steroids. I'll be talking before my name is steroids. I'm major against that. So he's kind of like that, but and other people who try to talk shit to build a fight. I think it's just stupid. They make him, they make himself look stupid because they're not doing it well. Connor is kind of like he he plans for this shit, so when he executes it, it's like it's spot on. And people like Cho Sonic who are really smart. They talk shit, but it's like intellectual. That sells fight too. Get people like Connor, Nate, the Diaz brothers actually. Connor, the Diaz brothers, and uh, Cho Sonnen, when they talk shit, it gets their opponents like angry at them. And my checks are super heavy. I don't give a fuck about, about, no, about no bell, brother. That that sells tickets, but I like it because I like altercation and stuff. But so it gives um, sport a bad name. But you you have to do what you got to do to build up your, your own resume. So talking shit's good, it works. I have worked with Jose Aldo, so it has to work. And people don't forget, the original Conor McGregor was Cho Sonnen, and when Cho Sonnen was talking shit about Brazil, every Brazilian, it was every Brazilian versus Cho Sonnen. And Cho Sonnen was hated. When he, when he was in Brazil, he got desperate as people tried to kill him. Um, and for Cho Sonnen, uh, I mean, the Brazilian fans hate you. I mean, especially if you win against Anderson Silva, how uh, do you think you can make it out of Brazil alive? Because they were threatening Chad Mendes. Well, and you know, you bring up a very good point, and I don't like that. I don't like being in this spot, and I think that it went a little bit too far, and that wasn't my intention. So I packed a suitcase full of gifts, full of things that, from America that they don't have. I'm trying to merge. Yeah, I'm trying to merge the two countries in a way, you know, that maybe we can work together. For example, I brought I bought packets of soap for them. Because I know they don't have it. And I just want to help. And I brought shampoo. 
and I brought them dental floss. He may not want that attention, but he likes it, and you know, it works. So, ticket, he was like the number one ticket seller before Connor, so you know, it's good. But you know, the guys that talk shit or that talk it like efficiently, yeah, they're guys that that, that break on um, pay per view records. Floyd Mayweather, Floyd Mayweather, you know, breaking numbers. Doing well, pay-per-view buys, you know, so at, at towards the end of his career, you know, it, they kind of declined because of the opponents he chose. But, like, throughout his career, you know, it was just rising, 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 rising. And, you know, pretty much, you know, he sold his persona well. In a rough and tough fight come May 5th. I'm so scared. Hi, my name is Oscar De La Hoya. I'm going to do this. I'm going to, you ain't going to do shit. You know, he sold his character pretty well to the people, and the people, they hated him. So, for example, like, when he... When he fought against Oscar, when he came out with the Mexican sombrero and like the Mexican flag, all like, you know, I was, with his sombrero, I was pissed. With, with his sombrero on backwards, like you know, people, had you know, chicken, he had a chicken yeah. in his mansion. <laughs> yeah, you know, he he was um, you know, he he was selling his persona, you know, and the people, some people hated him, some people loved him, you know, depending on like, you know, if you're a fan or not, you know, but pretty much he sold his persona well, you know, he was able to make millions and millions off the sport. This goes on, you know, even back back further, you know, Muhammad Ali, for example, another. You know, another great shit talker. He's nothing but a tramp. He's a bum. I'm the world's greatest. He must fall in five rounds, but if you talk about me, I'll cut his three. Even that big, ugly, bear son and listen. Is he your next fight? Well, after I annihilate this Henry Cooper, I want that bear. And what's going to happen to him? Bad. What's going to happen to him? He might be great, but he'll fall in eight. So when this, the really, in like martial arts, Conor McGregor set the tone for other um, aspects of martial arts. For example, in jiu-jitsu, we're starting to see a lot more uh, shit talking between each competitor. Like um, this guy named Florida Boy, he's an, he's, he acts like an asshole to try to build up jujitsu because MMA was like jujitsu in the 90s. It was, nobody wanted to see it. So this guy is trying to build up jujitsu as something that could be marketed like on mainstream TV. And people like Gary Tonin, Gordon Ryan, these people are talking shit. <laughs> these people are talking shit. <laughs> you think we're talking shit building up jiu-jitsu matches so they can uh, so they can build up the popularity so it's a good thing for all sports is shit talking and it, it gets people in trade into the matches and yeah I think trash talking is good for the for the game for the, for the sports for martial arts and, and boxing because um you know like I, like we told you guys you know those those personas those people they hype up the people you know that's what makes people I think people more than likely like the drama better they like the drama aspect the you know the, the big drama you're show. fat you know your mama too you get me they like they like yeah. all of that because that's that's what sells you know it will, we want we always want entertainment you know and sometimes like the fights are not even like that's the bad part though because sometimes like the shit talking is so good the hype is so good and then when the fight comes it's like ah oh, like man like i could have been home sleeping or something pacquiao and mayweather pacquiao and mayweather all that stuff that was said in the shit was the shittiest fight to go on on the mayweather thing People watch them, like my family watched them because we wanted him to lose. And people watch, people watch a certain fighter to, not because they like him, but they also want him to lose. And that again, and any publicity is good publicity, as some That's people true. say. Just to add on to that, yeah, there's gonna be, like sometimes you know if you really if the fighter plays his role very well, his character very good, you know people will watch him just just to, for the fact of seeing you know I told you so, you know I told you he was gonna lose, like yeah. you know for the mere fact of, of just hating the guy, you know hating his persona. That should wrap up this video. What do you guys think? Um, is shit talking good for the sport? Do you guys like it? What do you? How do you think it affects um, certain fighters? Leave your comments down below. And well, anything you guys want us to talk about, you know, comment down below as well. And hopefully you guys turn on your notifications. That way you guys are notified every time we upload a new video. And all of our social media, any way you want to contact us is down below too. Thank you guys. You hadn't talked about Floyd, you really disrespecting me. I mean, I'm, what you mean I'm really disrespecting? Y'all disrespected me. And they stick their middle finger up, basically saying, fuck you. So I stuck my middle finger back up and said, fuck y'all.